Our first of two games of the week is the CIAA Championship, which is a rematch from earlier in the year between Fayetteville State and Chowan. Let's see if Fayetteville State comes up with a victory yet again. Oh yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On podcast network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day and remember just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over just means it's time to follow me on twitter at south exclusives you can see it right there on the bottom of your screen if you're checking us out on youtube and today's episode is brought to you by upside download the free upside app at upside.app.link slash locked that is a mouthful but if you go to it and make sure you do you can go ahead and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more so it's worth it it's worth it man but i want to focus on our game of the week because this is kind of the high stake weekend this is kind of like conference championship weekends and it is for the d2s period it is literally but then you also have central who we mentioned earlier who could wrap up the MEAC with a win this week so there's a lot of high stake games but i've decided that you can't have conference championships not be your game of the week. So with that being the case, we're going to start off with the CIAA championship. And we're going to do it with three matchups. Y'all know how we get it going over here. So this game has already happened. We've seen it already. But Fayetteville State's defense is just so dominant to me that when doing these matchups, I felt like I had to highlight their defense every single time. It just made the most sense. No disrespect to the offense. They just have not been the star of the show at all. It's been defense, 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 defense. So we're going to see a lot of these topics, or actually all of these matchups will be defense-oriented, and most of these topics after that will be as well because that's just the respect I feel like the Fayetteville defense deserves. So with that preface, let's go ahead and get into the matchups. The first one is Siobhan Harkless versus the Fayetteville State run defense. And I think the one thing that Chowen undisputedly did pretty well against Fayetteville State was run the football and I'm not going to say it's not surprising but it's the least surprising if you were going to succeed anywhere because as great as that defense is and they rank high in the conference in basically everything they're like first in everything the one thing they're not first in is rush defense and they're not bad at it they're just not first so if there was one chink in the armor that you would feel like they've shown it's probably run defense I would put it like this just to show the same respect jumping over a giant is hard but I'd rather jump over the shortest giant, right? So let's just let's put it like this. I'm not a tall guy, right? So 6'3", that's pretty freaking tall for somebody who I ain't got the hops I used to. I'd rather try to jump over a 6'3 guy than a 6'7 guy, right? 6'3 is still pretty tall, though. That's the run defense of Fayetteville State. And if you're over six foot, shut up. Don't even come in my comments telling me about how I'm short, okay? I, I know. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, Najiri Peoples, he rushed for 111 yards on 23 carries, nearly five yards a pop. You're looking at a successful day for the run game of Chowan a couple of weeks. This is about a month and a half ago at this point. It's at the end of September, so a month and some change. And that game, to me, feels like it should be the blueprint for what Chowan tries to do. They had a successful run game. The only difference is I said Siobhan Harkless versus the Fayetteville State run defense. And with that... It's because we haven't seen people since Bowie State. And since then, Harkless has been the leading running back in every game, the two since then, right? And he struggled against Union, but the last game against Elizabeth City State, he did put it together. He did go for over 100 yards. So you want to try to replicate that. And you're going to hope that you had a game plan. It wasn't just peoples that allowed you to succeed against Fayetteville State. You're going to hope that you had a game plan that you can now implement Harkless in. There's certain... Um, schemes where you can just put a put a running back in and it 
typically leads to success because it's just about vision and things of that nature. You got to hope that you have the right scheme for it. So it's a new face, but you got to hope for the same success from about a month ago. So the second thing I want to get into is the wide receivers. You have Malik Tobias and Lawrence King versus the Fayetteville State pass defense. And when you look at them, King's the one who has the most yards per game. He's high in that, you know. But he's only like two yards ahead of King. I mean, of, over Tobias. And Tobias is the one where you're really looking at and saying, let's see what he can do. Because over the last three games, you had 90 yards and a touchdown, 94 yards and a touchdown, over 100 yards and two touchdowns. So you're looking at a guy who over the last three games has scored four touchdowns. Over the season, he scored six touchdowns. In the last three games, he's had, what, that's about 300 yards? or nearly 300 yards and four touchdowns in the last three games, if he's able to replicate that, now you're looking at an offense that had the ability to run, might even pass a little bit better. And I'll say this, Fayetteville State has a stout passing defense, but Chowan put up the most yards. Yards don't really matter if you can't score points, which was the problem in late September. But you look at King, or excuse me, you look at Tobias, and he has the ability to put up yards and points. He's shown it over the last three weeks. And if he's truly in a groove, now we might be we might be dealing with something a little bit different. But Fayetteville State's pass defense is dominant, right? I can't just not boast them up because they're number one in the conference, right? So you have the least amount of yards allowed by 300 yards. You have the lowest yards per attempt, the third lowest completion percentage, the fewest amount of touchdowns allowed. So it's not as if, oh, well, Tobias and King, they've really been doing well. Yeah, that's true. But let's not forget that Fayetteville State has been doing pretty darn well for themselves as well, right? So you're looking at a defense that has stopped most of the people they went against. Even this game against Chowan, when they were able to put up 200 yards, which has only happened twice. Matter of fact, people have only been over 150 yards twice. It just so happened that both of those teams did go over 200 as well. But they ain't put up no touchdowns until the end of the game, until the end of the third quarter. So it's it's irrelevant. I'll take all those yards. Just make sure you don't score. And that's what they were able to do. And then lastly, you're looking at the offensive line versus the defensive line. And this goes both ways because both of these teams are extremely adept at getting after the quarterback. Both of these teams sack the quarterback a lot. They're one and two. They are one and two. Chowman is one. Fayetteville State is two. But the thing is, they're both middle in the pack, middle of the pack at stopping sacks. So, if I'm a defensive lineman, I'm licking my chops. I am licking my chops. Now, if you're an offensive lineman or a fan of offensive line play, this might be a bilious game, right? You might not want to see this game. You might not want to really, you know, dive too deep into the film of this game because in the last time they faced off, Fayetteville State had five sacks. I'm making sure my defensive line is going on the offensive. We're getting after that quarterback. They're going to want to pass it. We're going to go after that quarterback. Right. That's what I'm trying to do every time they drop back. Of course, that's the goal. But you got to make sure that you bring in stunts. You got to make sure that you bring in pressures. You got to make sure that even if they're getting positive yards through the air, let's make sure that they're having at least some attempts where they're not able to get the ball up. They're getting sacked. And that's negative yards through the air, basically. Right. So you have negative yards on the pass play. That's the way I look at it. a lot of people put some people, some people put sack yardage into the rushing totals for a quarterback. I prefer when they subtract it from the passing yards. I just think it's way more applicable and actually shows each facet of the game a little bit better. That's just a personal opinion of mine. But going forward, we're going to talk about two storylines, including can the winner of this make it into the D2 playoffs? I'm not quite sure, but I'll tell you why I have a little bit of hesitance as we continue going forward with Locked on HBCU. And today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Listen, times is hard. Things are getting high. Inflation is crazy. Everybody is dealing with something and a lot of people are cutting back, whether that's cutting back on gas and not going places, whether that's cutting back on groceries or cutting back on dining out. You don't have to do any of that when you have the Upside app. Matter of fact, before I recorded this, I just got an update from Upside telling me that a Thai restaurant in my area is offering 6% cash back. So with this, all you have to do is go find where you're going. You check that that's where you're going to. You swipe your car, you input your card information, and then when it's time to pay, you just click the button and boom, you get cash back. It's very simple, and it goes back to wherever you want it. If you wanted to go into your account or if you wanted to go into your card, it has 
your account for upside, not your bank account. Or you can go back into your card for your bank account. Either one, you can get both done. Just make sure you go to the Upside app and you can get $5 or more on your first purchase of $10 or more. As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day and remember for your second listen of the day you need to be checking out locked on sports today with peter bukowski breaking down all of the biggest stories nationally today's word of the day is bilious meaning sickingly unpleasant to look at and if you're an offensive line fan this game might be quite bilious so just be watching out for that but we have our two storylines and i think the first one and the one that you know I really want to know when this is going to happen. But the first storyline is, is this the year that Fayetteville State gets over the hump? Fayetteville State has been in the CIAA championship now five years in a row. And they say that the third time it's a charm. I don't know. Maybe they meant to say fifth. Maybe we've been saying it wrong all these years. Maybe the fifth time is the charm. I'm okay with that. It's big five. Like my number. So maybe that's the case. And Fayetteville State is hoping that that is the case. Right now, Fayetteville State kind of reminds me of the Andy Reid Eagles. They got to the conference championship multiple years in a row. I think it took them four years before they finally got to a Super Bowl. But they did get to the Super Bowl. They did eventually get over that conference championship hump. Eventually, you feel like Fayetteville State has to do it, right? They have to. And they're finally facing the team. They faced the team that they beat earlier in the season. So they know how to beat Chowan. Now, Chowan is a different team, and Chowan has really ended the season hot. But you feel like, you know what? This is my year. I don't have to face Bowie State again. They've been really holding them off for like the last three years. I don't have to face Virginia State, who was there the year before. Now I get to go against Chowan. And it's not that Chowan is a scrub. It's just that, man, at least it's a breath of fresh air. At least I don't have to revisit the same team over and over and over. It's a little bit different when every year I get to see Bowie State. And every year Bowie State beats me. I'm sure that could affect with the mental a little bit. But at least with Chowan... It's not a history. And if there is any history to lean on, it's the fact that I beat you earlier in the year. So possibly, I'm not saying that confidence was shot all of these years, but possibly you come into this game with a little bit more confidence. Now, Richard Hayes, all he knows is success. He came in in 2016, had a rough year that year because he had to get things right. Ever since then, it's been conference championships. You feel like he has to get one eventually, right? And if he does get it, he deserves the coldest of Gatorade baths after this, right? That's what he deserves. But all of this individual success, all of this team success has stopped at one point for Fayetteville State. It has eluded them for five years. We're talking about the pandemic. Now you're going on six years, but you had that pandemic gap. It has eluded you for half of a decade. Eventually, you want to see if they can get over the hump or maybe that's just They just aren't that team to get over there. They're good enough to get there, but they're not good enough to be the best team in the conference. I don't know. But that's what we will be looking at. And it's just another way to highlight how successful that Richard Hayes has been. Fayetteville State has now been, including this year, to nine CIAA championships. This iteration has now been responsible for five of them. This is the fifth time that Fayetteville State has been to a conference championship under Richard Hayes' lead. They've been nine times in school history. He's over half of the playoff or the conference berths. This is impressive. But the question is, if Fayetteville State or even Chowan wins, do they make the playoffs? That's the second storyline. Does the winner of this game make the playoffs? I'm leaning to no. I don't think that Chowan has a shot. In all of the top 10 rankings that have been released, Chowan has never been there. So you don't know where Chowan is. You could easily be 11 and not, they're not going to tell you. This isn't the top 25 where they tell you, oh, these other teams got votes. They tell you the 10 teams that are in and that's it. So Chowan could have easily been 11 every single week. And if that's the case, maybe they stand a chance. But the fact that they lost two games at the beginning of the season, it's just going to be a little bit difficult to really, you know, go with. And then they lost a the game to Fayetteville State later in the year. So you have three losses. Even with the conference championship, there is no automatic berth. There is no automatic berth. So even with that conference championship, you kind of find it hard to believe that they're going to put in a three-loss team. You just question it. So I think their chances are, I'm talking about slim. I mean, like the edge of paper, slim. I just don't think it's going to happen. But then you go and you look at 
a team like Fayetteville State, who in the first D2 rankings, or not in the first, the one last week, they were actually number 10. The one this week, they're not in it. But they've been there, so I would assume that they're in the mix. They didn't impress against Winston-Salem State. That hurt. That hurt. And you've already beat Chowan. If you beat Chowan in the same way that you beat them earlier in the year, I, I'm not quite sure that you're going to make it in. That's just how I feel. I'm not quite sure that you make it in if you beat Chowan 13 to 10 again. You might have to be a little bit more dominant. You might have to be a little bit more impressive, a little bit more of a gap because you've already beat this team. So you need to show that you've gotten better because this is the metric. It's all about getting better through the season, right? And what better way to show that you've improved than to play a team that you already played? Now it has to be a different outcome. So maybe you have to beat this team by 14. Maybe you have to beat this team by three scores. I don't know. But I do know it's going to be very difficult for them to jump to number seven from maybe 11. We don't know. I don't think those State could be 13 right now. They're 13. They're not going to make it. They're, you're not going to jump seven spots to get into the top seven. You're just not going to do it. But if you're 11, maybe you look at Tuskegee and say, all right, well, they're going to lose to Benedict. Maybe you look at Fort Valley and say, well, we won the conference championship and we only have one loss to our name or at least one loss within the region or two losses. But they don't have many losses. I can't, I'm mad I just caught a brain fart. But they don't have many losses. I think they have two. I think they're eight and two right now. So you're looking, you're like, man, we've had a good season and we're the conference champion. You got to put us in. But then you got to jump like four more teams. It's just, it's just hard, okay? I think it's going to be very slim chances that either one of these teams make it into the playoffs. But I think that if one of them did, it would be Fayetteville State. And going forward, we're going to talk about the key to victory. It's the same exact key for both teams. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is when we come back. Before I get into that, however, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, where my money makers at, man. Where are my money makers at? Where are those who say, I know the game? Not only do I know the game, I have such confidence in my knowledge of the game. I'm going to put my money behind it. I have such confidence in my knowledge of the game, I'm going to put my money behind it, whether that's player props and feeling like this player is going to cross that many yards or if it's going to have that many touchdowns or if we're just talking about the point spread. It doesn't matter if you're talking about football, college or pro, basketball, college or pro, baseball, right, soft, softball, all of these sports are there. Combat sports, Israel Adesanya has a major fight going on against I'm going to say his nemesis on Saturday. You want to put some money down on that? Put some money down on that, but there's only one place to do it, and that is Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wage on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I do appreciate y'all for making it to the last segment, and I have the key to victory for both Fayetteville State and Challen. Make it to 21 points. That is the goal. I feel like if you make it to 21, maybe 22 points, you win this game. These teams don't allow 21 points often. Chowan has done it. Chowan has been in a couple of games where they had to score more than 21 because their opponent scored more than 21, or they just allowed their opponent to score over 21 points. That's been four times. Fayetteville State, they've done it twice. And one was the time when they lost against Virginia Union. Ironically, Union put up 20 points on both of these teams or 21 points on both of these teams. It's just about who could score more points. But most times, if Fayetteville State is scoring 21 points, they won. That's how dominant that the defense is. They won that game. But if you look at a team like Chowan, who's been in a couple of more shootouts, maybe not. Overall, I just feel like if you score three touchdowns in a game where Last time, it was 13 to 10. You barely had 21 points scored total. If you score 21 points in a matchup like that, you should win. Let's just assume that both offenses have figured a little something out. Something they've looked at at the film and they know where to exploit now. And they have a little bit of an improvement. I'd push it to 24 max. But I don't think both of these teams score over 24. I don't think both of these teams score over 21. If you get into the 20s, it's a pretty good chance that you win this game. So that's the goal. I'm going to tell my offense, make sure you get points on the board. I probably, honestly, in this game, I would probably be more risk averse. I'm, as long as I trust my kicker, I'm going to kick every field goal that I can. I'm not going to go for it on too many fourth downs because I know that points are at a premium. I don't think that any team is just going to go up and down the field. I don't see that happening. But what I would say is when you have a chance, 
you better take the points because you might end up regretting it at the end of the game, especially as close as it was the first time. Now, as we go around the HBCU, Isaiah Land was invited to the Senior Bowl, and this was a big deal. He had one quote about it that I did want to read. He said, I don't have the same stats as last year, but I've been playing good ball. This invitation takes some weight off of me in thinking about what comes after my last game. I don't want to say he was a shoe in but I was pretty confident that Isaiah Land was going to make the Senior Bowl. I was I just felt like, okay, that's for sure going to happen. That's for sure going to be what his last step is as a FAMU player. And I'm glad that it happened. He's deserving of it. He was a 2022 uh, Buck Buchanan Award winner or 2021 Buck Buchanan Award winner. And this year, he's played well. He just doesn't have 20 sacks, right? And it's like the attention he's getting is a little bit different. But I would like to see what he can do at the Senior Bowl because with that, he can make himself a lot of money. And then lastly, I thought that UAPB and South Carolina State did a great job opening up the season. UAPB took it to TCU. They only won by, or TCU only won by one point. And they were up for a lot of the game. They just made it really close. And you look at South Carolina State, who pushed South Carolina to the limits as well, where they needed those last second free throws to make sure that the lead stayed, you know, where it was. But this was a very close game that honestly came down to the wire and South Carolina State had a really good chance to take it into overtime. I don't think they would have won in regulation, but they had a really good chance to take it into overtime. They just didn't do it. But these are still pretty good starts to the season. And, you know, it's always it's always nice when you see them push the power five schools. But going forward on tomorrow's episode, we're going to be talking about the SEAC championship between Tuskegee and Benedict, the number one team in the Super Region number two, Benedict Tigers. I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. Every day for your second listen, make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports today wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. In the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Exclusives, excuse me. You can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.